Good morning, and welcome to A View from the Vicar for Tuesday, the 11th of July, 2023. I'm Richard Leggett, the Vicar of Holy Trinity Cathedral in New Westminster, British Columbia. This week, I'm going to depart from my usual practice. Usually, I read the gospel or one of the readings for the week to come, the coming Sunday. But my colleague Carol is preaching on Sunday, and I don't want to say anything today that might uh, uh, conflict with or duplicate what she's planning to preach on Sunday. But there is another reason. Today is the feast of Benedict of Nursia, the founder of what we now know as the Benedictine Order. And for me, as a member of the Fellowship of St. John the Evangelist, <clears throat> a group of lay and ordained people who walk as companions to the members of the Society of St. John the Evangelist, uh, a community founded in the spirit of the Benedictine order. I want to honor St. Benedict today. And so my reflection today is going to be on the gospel reading for the Eucharist, if we were celebrating it today. And that gospel reading is from John chapter 15, verses 12 to 17. Jesus said, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these things, these commands, so that you may love one another. <clears throat> I don't know why, but uh, recently that particular gospel from John has appeared several times uh, in my last two weeks, whether in liturgical celebrations or in a reference uh, to something uh, in some work that I was doing. And I'm beginning to think that God has a message for me in that, that somehow I need to look more closely at John 15, verses 12 to 17. There's perhaps something that I'm missing or something that God is trying to bring to my attention or Simply, God is encouraging me using this text as a means of encouragement. But it is also a text that I do find appropriate for this day when we remember Benedict of Nursia. We often forget that the monastic movement in the Western tradition began as people who were trying to be faithful to Christ in a time of profound social and cultural change. Benedict died around the year 550, um, and at the time of his death, the Roman Empire in the West had pretty much fallen apart, and you had the rise of various kingdoms, uh, many of which were uh, kingdoms of peoples who had opposed the Roman Empire in one way or another. Uh, this was a time, for example, when in Britain, the native Celtic population was experiencing the beginnings of the Saxon invasions and the, uh, the incursions of their cousins, the Irish, uh, into the north of what is now Britain and what is now we now call Scotland. And so th this was going on in Britain. Things were happening in what we now call France, uh, also in, in Spain, in Italy, and in the great vast German lands. And so people were trying to find a way of discovering stability in that, trying to find meaning in the middle of that. And Benedict, along with others, found that way forward in creating small communities of people who lived and worked together, prayed together, studied together, and supported one another. 
At the heart of the Benedictine rule um, is the, the word obedience. And unfortunately, we often forget that the root of the word obedience is in Latin, audire, to listen. Um, obedience is listening. Uh, it's listening to God, it's listening to uh, a, a leader, but it's about listening, listening to one another. And for Benedict, that was key to the rule. Uh, whether you were the abbot or the newest brother, we were the, the rule of Benedict wants people to listen to one another because it believes that each of us is one of the ways God communicates with us. That in listening to one another, truly listening to one another, we might hear the voice of God. And that voice may say something that we heartily agree with, uh, and take great, great comfort in. Or it may be something that challenges our assumptions. But if we're listening, if we're being obedient, then the message will be one that eventually is one of hope and of joy, because God has redirected us and led us into paths we've not expected. One of the ways we listen for God is in daily prayer, in daily reading of the scriptures. Uh, the influence of the Benedictine movement on Anglicanism goes in so many ways, and, and I won't bore you today with, with all the ways in which the Benedictine movement influenced what we now call Anglicanism, except for one thing. We all know that one of the great joys in Anglicanism is uh, the tradition of morning and evening prayer. And that comes right out of the Benedictine tradition and its influence on the on uh, British Christians. So are we praying each day? Are we taking some time to read some scripture each day? Because in reading, in, in offering our prayers and in reading the scriptures, God speaks to us. Are we listening to each other? And this is hard for us because, um, unfortunately, human beings have what some scholars have called confirmation bias. In other words, we only hear what we want to hear. And we are desperately in need of hearing things that perhaps we don't want to hear. Uh, are we truly listening to one another? So as we continue in our journey of faith. I hope that we will honor the spirit of Benedict and those Christians living at a time of social and cultural upheaval who took time to listen to God, to listen for God, and to listen to and for one another so that they might more clearly see how to be good disciples of Jesus in their times and in their places. Surely, friends, that's what we need to do as well, to listen to and for God, to listen to and for one another, so that we can be good disciples of Jesus in our own times and places. The world needs us to be good disciples, it may not always recognize it. It may not always honor us. But the world needs us. Because the world that we live in, as it is in almost every generation, suffers from some social and cultural upheaval. And in that, what we offer them is the voice of Christ, who sees each one of us as precious gifts, who dares to call us friends, and that by friends, he expects us to bear fruit worthy of being a friend of Jesus. I hope this week goes well for you, and I hope that you will find ways of listening to and for God and listening to and for one another. Let us pray. Eternal God, who made Benedict a wise master in the school of your service, and a guide to many called into community to follow the rule of Christ. Grant that we may put your love before all else, and seek with joy the way of your commandments, 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessings to you all, my friends.